Hello class, my name is Brandon Banos. I'm going to be presenting to you guys today digital image display systems and all the softwares and how they tie into uh, what we do, hospitals, healthcare organizations, henceforth. So we're going to first start with PACS. PACS stands for Picture Archiving and Communication Systems. It's a medical imaging technology that provides storage and easy access to images from multiple imaging modalities, such as X-ray, MRI, sonogram, etc. Uh, all images are transmitted digitally through PACS. This eliminates the need to manually store films. You know, when you take an X-ray, you don't have to worry about finding an envelope for it. You don't have to worry about getting it to uh, where it needs to be so that the uh, film doesn't ruin. Everything is done electronically and super, super fast. So PACS consists <clears throat> of four major components. These components are images from X-ray, like I said earlier, CT, MRI, and most importantly, a secured network for the transfer of patient information. And we'll go into what that is next. Okay, so like I said earlier, PACS eliminates the need for storage of hard copies. Everything is soft copies, all digital. Um, one of the really good things, crucial aspects of PACS is that it allows for remote access. What this means is that if an image is taken at the hospital and the radiologist is not on site, that image can be sent to him electronically through PACS. So the radiologist doesn't always have to be on site. And what's good about it is that that radiologist can then send that image to other radiologists. Could be in different states or across the world so that they can communicate together effectively to properly diagnose the patient. This is referred to as teleradiology. So next would be DICOM. <clears throat> DICOM stands for Digital Imaging and Communications in Medicine. DICOM is best defined as the standard for communication and management, information, and related data. DICOM is most commonly used for the storage and transmission of medical images, which enables an integration of series of a series of medical devices. Uh, these medical devices can be scanners, printers, workstations, and packs as well. So they all work together. So DICOM has a few different aspects of it that make it safe and proper to use. So the first one would be TCP slash IP. What this is, is transmission protocol, transmission control protocol, and internet protocol. TCP and IP is a set of communications protocols that are used in the internet along with similar computer networks. These two TCP and IP are the foundational protocols that are included in a suite. What a suite is, it's a cluster of software information that protects the user from malware and viruses. So what's included in DICOM? A gateway. A gateway is a key stopping point for data on its way to and from other networks. So when you send an image, you're opening up your gateway and the receiver is opening up their gateway as well. So it's a secure pathway between one user to another. Gateways provide a way to communicate and send data back and forth. A DICOM gateway is a secure and reliable way to send images back and forth between physicians. It's also compliant with HIPAA, which is required by law. So included in DICOM are object class and subject class. In an object class, it's based oriented programming paradigm. An object refers to a particular instance of a class in which the object may be combined with a set of functions, variables, and data structures as well. A subject class represents a group of related information for one entity. This information includes the identities as well as any security information such as passwords and cryptographic keys. A subject may have multiple identities. Each identity is represented by a principle within the subject. A principle is bound to the name of the subject. For example, an individual might have a principle bound to their name, but a different principle bound to their ID. They're just different um, factors that help identify the patient. 
so that if one of these principles is compromised, another principle can come into effect and clarify the patient's identity. So next we have HIS, which stands for Hospital Information System. <clears throat> a hospital information system primarily focuses on the administrational importances within a hospital. So this pretty much deals with everything that's inside the hospital, all their information, all their paperwork. It's all put electronically into one database. A HIS is specifically designed to handle and manage all parts of the hospitals, such as financials, legal information, administrative information, and medical issues as well. HIS has to be, has to be completely secure because they also have access to patient data records as well as confidential data. Benefits of a HIS are accurate administration of finances, patient diet, distribution of medical aid, and primarily helps to view a broad picture of hospital growth. Next we have RIS, R-I-S, which stands for Radiology Information System. A RIS is an inform information system that is in charge of managing patients' medical images and any associated data belonging to those patients. It is most often used alongside PACS to help manage image archives, record keeping, as well as billing. A RIS is also a crucial component for patient management. It can track a patient's workflow within the radiology department, allow staff to make appointments for these patients, uh, both inpatients and outpatients, and it's used for individual patients' images along with their associated information. So how this works. So let's say you have an image sent through PACS. On the radiologist's computer, it's not only gonna show that patient's image, but it's also gonna show any associated data with them, such as weight, their age, um, any allergies, any known conditions, pretty much anything that has to do with the patient that's um, crucial to know for the radiologist, it will be included in the RIS. So HL7, <clears throat> health level seven, it's primarily primarily focuses on an international set of standards for the transfer of both administrative and clinical data between different software applications utilized by various healthcare providers. This set of standards focuses on the application layer, which is termed layer seven. These standards are put in place by Health Level 7 International, which is an international standards organization. Healthcare organizations and hospitals have a variety of different computer systems used for everything from patient tracking to billing records. So what this is, Health Level 7, it's a set of standards that's put in place so that when anything related to the patient, any data that's confidential is being transmitted electronically, this comes in and protects that patient's information. It's a set of standards that shows the software what to do and what not to do. It's like a series of codes that the software reads and it's, it identifies what to do and where to send that information. So like this, these are just a few examples of HL7 standards. Version 2.x messaging standard <clears throat> uh, has an interop interoperability specification for health and medical transactions, structured product labeling, the published information that accompanies a medicine based on HL7 version three, clinical document, clinical document architecture, an exchange model for clinical documents based, based on HL7 version three, clinical context work group, an interoperability specification for the visual integration of user applications, and CCD, con continuity of care document, a US specification for the exchange of medical summaries based on CDA. These are my references. Thank you very much.